Hi guys, it's Jimmy McIntyre here. Today we've got a special tutorial that I created just for the amazing guys at 500pix.com. We're going to look at how to go from an overexposed flat cityscape like this to a much more dramatic, dynamic and balanced cityscape like this. <laughs> Before we begin, there are a number of links in the description of this video. The first one is to the original PSD file I use for the workflow, so you can see all of my steps and you can experiment with the original files yourself. Next we have a link to an article on 500pix.com showing you how I shot these images and with some written text to go along with the video tutorial. Next we have a link to the easy panel which is a free download and you'll see it in action in this workflow. And finally, we have a link to a beginner's tutorial on luminosity masks to show you just how powerful they can be in your workflow. Now, to begin with, let's look at our original files that we'll be working with. This is our base exposure and this is what we're going to build everything around. Now, we're using this as the base exposure because it has some nice smooth water and the buildings are nice and sharp and generally it's a balanced image. We're actually going to use a very similar image, same exposure, taken some time before but we're just going to use this for the sky. So we're going to blend that nicely into this base exposure so we have more drama in the sky there. Next, we have this darker exposure and we're going to use that because as you can see on the base exposure, we have some very overexposed areas here and here. And we're going to use this darker exposure to restore some of those overexposed highlights. Then, we have two more exposures that will be used just for the light trails on the boats and we'll blend them very, very quickly. So the final scene, we should have these dramatic clouds in the sky. We should have the light trails from the boats coming down here and these highlights should be nicely recovered. So let's start the blending process. To begin with, I'm going to create a black mask on this layer, the top layer. And I'm going to do that by holding Alt or Option on a Mac and left clicking on Create Layer Mask icon at the bottom here. Then I'm going to make these two exposures invisible and I'm going to make that invisible too. And I'm going to create a black mask on the darker exposure. Now to blend the exposures naturally, we're going to use luminosity masks. And for me, they are the most powerful way to create natural, clean HDRs without HDR software. To generate the luminosity masks, I'm going to use my Easy Panel. And anyone can download this for free. It has some great functionality. And like I said before, the link to the download can be found in the description of this video. I'm just going to go to Create Brights Luminosity Masks because we just need a selection of the brightest parts of the image. So if we close this and go to our Channels palette, we'll see our luminosity masks. And I'm going to use Brights too, just because it has a very nice selection of the brightest parts of the image here. To make the selection, I'm going to hold down Control and left click on the thumbnail or Command and left click. I'm going to go back to the Layers panel, click once on this layer, and then click on the thumbnail. Uh, sorry, click on the black mask. Then I'm going to make sure I have my paintbrush selected, I have the foreground set to white, and the opacity at about 70%. Now I'm going to make the marching ants around here invisible by pressing Control and H or Command and H. Now we just paint in this darker exposure. And I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller now. And we can paint it in again to strengthen the effect. And especially around this area, which is very bright. And one more time there. And this is the before and after. You can see we've very naturally and very easily restored the highlights in the image. And we did it all without HDR software. Next, we're going to open up the Easy Panel and delete the bright masks because we don't want it to slow our workflow down. Now, for the light trails, all we have to do very easily is select both light trails by holding Control or Command and clicking on both of them and go to the Blend Mode, Lighten. And you'll see that very easily the light trails have been blended into the images but we've also added extra brightness in the areas that we've just restored here here and to the left here 
and we didn't want that. So if we zoom out, we can create a mask on the top layer, set our paintbrush to black and opacity to 100 and we can just blend that out and we'll do the same with this bottom layer as well. And now I make a smaller paintbrush to be a bit more precise and do the same over here too. And there we go. So this is the before and after. And now we can select our cloud layer, make sure the mask is selected, go to our paintbrush, make sure the foreground is white and opacity set to 100. And we're just gonna paint in that nice big cloud. There we go. And again, this is the before and after much more dramatic. With all of our exposures blended, we can group them all into a group called Blend. Now, originally, I knew how I wanted all of these elements to fit together, but I wanted to be very creative with the color. So I went to the Adjustments panel and opened up a Color Lookup layer. Now, this might be the first time you've seen this before. I think it was only introduced in CS6 and it actually contains some very cool color presets for Photoshop. Like we have things like edgy amber and let's have a look, um, film stock. And each one does something very different and you can experiment and play with the ones you like best. For this image, I was looking for a more futuristic feel. So I chose futuristic bleak, but it really was bleak and I wasn't very happy with the, the feel of the image. But I like some of the added green tones and the desaturation. So. I moved the opacity down to around 30% for this layer. Next, I went back to Color Lookup and I opened up a much stronger effect called Foggy Night. I love the dark blue, especially the dark blue in the shadows. And this is obviously very strong, so I lowered the opacity to around 40%. Next, I still wanted a few more blues in the shadows, so I opened up a color balance layer here. I went to shadows and I increased that to around 10. And I threw some more blues in the mid-tones as well. After looking at the image, I decided it might be a little bit blue, so I reduced the opacity to around about 50%. Naturally, this image is quite dark, so to brighten it up, I opened up a levels adjustment layer and chose the mid-tones and just slid them along slightly. I then grouped all of these layers and called it color. Clearly this image is lacking in contrast. And rather than applying a general contrast adjustment, like through a curves layer or a levels layer, I wanted to create some local contrast. And I do that through Nick Color FX. So to open up Nick Color FX, first of all, we have to merge all of these layers non-destructively. And I do that by holding Control, Alt, Shift and E, or Command, Option, Shift and E on a Mac. And you'll see we have all of the merged layers but we still have the existing layers in case we want to make any changes later. So now I go to Filter, Nick Collection, and Color FX Pro. Now the first filter we're going to use can be found right at the bottom, and it's called Pro Contrast. And I especially love the Dynamic Contrast filter. If we just slide this to the right, all the way to around 80%, 85%, we can see it has a huge effect on our image. There's a before and after. But I also like to protect my shadows and to do that I just slide the shadows all the way along to the right and I can protect the highlights as well by sliding them to the right. Now this has added a lot of local contrast and has given our image a lot more energy. But there's also a lot to look at in our image. So I'm going to create a very natural vignette and I do that by going to Darken Light and Center. And in Darken and Light and Center I'm going to change the shape to a more circular shape and these are the three main sliders. The first one increases the luminosity of what you consider to be the center part of the image. The second one, border luminosity, creates the actual vignette. And we don't want it to be too dark. And the next one is the center size. So you can control how big you want the center point. Now, this is the before and after. You can see it started to concentrate the eye more to the central part of the image. And that's where we want it to be right now. 
These side parts of the image don't really add too much to the overall feel, but this dramatic cloud and then leading down to these light trails, that's where the energy comes from. So with these filters, we're just gonna press OK. With our color effects layer now in Photoshop, we can see a great before and after. It's made a huge difference and give our image much more kick. Some areas might have become a little bit overexposed, like some of the highlights along here and on the horizon here. So what we can do is just create a mask on this layer and with the brush selected and black set to foreground and we can lower the opacity to around about 50% and just blend out some of those highlights that may have become a little bit overexposed. Not in that corner actually. Maybe down here too. Okay, that's much better. Now we're gonna add even more emphasis to this main cloud here by opening up a levels adjustment layer and bringing the highlights all the way along to the left. To make this layer invisible, we're gonna press Control and I or Command and I in a Mac. And to concentrate it just in the sky, we're gonna create a white paintbrush and set the opacity to 100. And we're just gonna gently paint in that levels adjustment layer. And you can see it makes a huge difference and again pulls the eye towards that dramatic cloud. Now we only have one more thing to do. If you remember the base exposure that we had had some nice smooth water. But when we blended in the light trail exposure, we got some more texture into the water here. Now you might like to keep that. Personally, I like the idea of the sharp light trail contrasting against the smooth water. So we're going to create a fake smooth water effect just here and maybe a little bit here as well. And we're going to do that by holding Control, Alt, Shift and E or Command, Option, Shift and E on a Mac and creating a new layer. And we're going to go to Filter, Blur and Motion Blur. And we're going to set the distance to 166. And with that applied, we can create a black layer mask, a white brush, make it nice and small. And we're just going to paint in some of that smoother layer. And I think that looks much better. And now if we lower the opacity to around 50% or 40%, we can apply it to some of this light as well. And that's it. Now, when I originally published this, a few people asked why I kept the crooked buildings instead of the straight buildings. The truth is, I love the crooked buildings. I think it adds much more dynamism to the image. But for those of you who aren't sure about how to correct perspective distortion, I'm going to take you through that anyway. It's very, very easy. And all we need to do first is flatten all of the layers. So now it's destructive. Now, in this case, usually it's better to correct all the distortion at the beginning of the workflow because you should keep it as non-destructive as possible. If you leave it to the end like this, you have to flatten your image, which will essentially lose all of the steps that you've led up to up until this point. So if you have to do it at the end, save your workflow first and then flatten the image. Now, I'm going to unlock this background layer, go to Filter, Lens Correction, Custom, and I'm going to go down to Vertical Perspective under Transform. And we're just going to slide it to the left. And what I'm looking for is how straight the side of this building is in connection with the grid line and this one too. And that looks pretty straight. So we can press OK. And you can see it's straight in the buildings. Now if we crop it until the very nearest points and press OK, this is what the image would look like if we straightened the buildings. Now there are different ways to do it with different outcomes, but generally I just didn't like it. I much preferred the crooked buildings. It's entirely up to you and your taste, but at least now, if you didn't know how to correct perspective distortion in Photoshop, you now have a good idea how to do it. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please, if you want to see more tutorials, subscribe to my YouTube channel and feel free to download the easy panel from my blog through strangelenses.com. Thank you very much.